If you've been following videos on YouTube, I'm guessing you're keen to improve your skills and you want to move closer to achieving your goals. How do you do that? How do you get from where you are now to where you want to be? Well, today I'm going to share seven habits that successful artists use that can help you approach your art with a professional mindset. The old saying, practice makes perfect, rings true, but for successful artists, it takes on a deeper meaning. It's no good to practice an incorrect technique or an ineffective color mixing strategy because that just reinforces mistakes. Mindless repetition won't cut it. Repeating incorrect techniques can lead to bad habits that are really hard to break. For a long time, I didn't mix colors because I didn't bother to learn how. It was easier for me to use colors straight out of the tube. And because of that, many of my earlier paintings lack color harmony. The colors were too bright and overpowering and there was nowhere for the eye to rest. I look at them now and I think, what was I thinking? I did a lot of things wrong. I still do, but I'm committed to learning, practicing and improving. It's important to reflect on the techniques you use, to question how effective they are, to try to perfect the correct ones and to get rid of the ones that don't serve you. This is a continuous process of learning, unlearning and relearning that every artist should do. It requires patience and persistence and a willingness to accept that sometimes we might be our own biggest obstacle. In his book, Mastering Atmosphere and Mood in Watercolour, Joseph Zerbukvich mentions that he looks forward to the road of new discoveries and challenges. He hopes to discover and conquer new levels of competence. He's a master and he wants to improve his skills. That's because he, like the rest of us, experiences failures. He knows that it's important to continually learn, experiment and improve his technique. So practice with purpose, hone your techniques and make sure you experiment. Avoid the trap of sticking to the same routine and open yourself up to learning and growth. The backbone of any successful artist's journey is discipline. It's what keeps you showing up day after day, dedicated to your craft. Successful artists don't just work when they're in the mood to be creative. They keep a regular schedule and they show up and they work. They encounter challenges just like amateur artists. They have creative blocks and other personal obstacles that they have to overcome. It's their discipline that helps them to stay committed to their artistic path during difficult times. If you were like me, you probably frequently struggle with perfecting your technique. And there are times when your paintings may fall short of your expectations. Instead of throwing in the towel, persevere and strive for improvement. Don't give up easily. Continue to push through your problems. Mary White in her book, painting portraits and figures in watercolour, mentions that she could wallpaper 10 houses with the hundreds of paintings that she's torn up over the years. She says, when you make mistakes, you have two choices, give up or try again. If you want to be a successful artist, be disciplined enough to try again and again and again. As an artist, you need to be consistent. Follow a routine, become familiar with your tools, refine your techniques and overcome creative blocks by creating regularly, regardless of your mood. If you train your brain to be consistently creative, your skills will improve over time. Being consistent will allow you to explore and develop your unique artistic voice. As you consistently work on your art, you'll discover themes, subjects and styles that you connect with. Your artistic voice will help your work become recognisable to your audience. If you are consistent, you are more likely to advance in your artistic journey than those artists who aren't consistent. 
you need a workspace and I think that workspace should be organized. You don't need a custom built space to work in like this. For years, I worked in the garage on a table in there. We moved to Sydney for four years and I worked in a corner of our tiny little apartment. When the kids moved out of this place, I set myself up in one of the bedrooms. All of the work that I did in those spaces allowed me to get this studio built. Now I have room to spread out, which is great, but more importantly, I can put stuff away. Everything has a place and I know where it is whenever I need it. I get in a mess when I'm painting. I seem to get stuff everywhere, but when I've finished a painting, I have this habit of cleaning up and putting everything away. Tidying up helps me to get into the right headspace so that I can start my next painting. So wherever it is that you paint, it might help you to be creative if you keep it organized. A tidy space will help you to focus. It will reduce distractions and you'll be able to get on with your work. Being creative can be a lonely pursuit. As artists, we often find peace when we're alone with our art supplies. That's important, but so is building a supportive network within the artistic community. When you have time, it's refreshing to connect with other creative people, people who understand you and have the same interests that you do. If you can, try to attend workshops and exhibitions to connect with other creative people. Feedback from your peers can offer fresh perspectives and give you some new ideas. Collaborations and shared experiences will enrich your journey and they might lead to exciting opportunities that you never imagined. When you spend time with like-minded creative people, it not only enhances your personal and professional growth, but it may help you when you are faced with setbacks or creative blocks. A network of other artists might encourage you and help you to overcome obstacles. You can engage with other artists in person, or if you can't, there are online art communities that you can join. Creating art can be met with both praise and criticism, and it takes discipline to be able to use feedback as an opportunity for growth. We need to develop a thick skin and realize that any negative feedback isn't necessarily an attack on our skills or creativity. Look at it instead as a mirror that reflects areas that we might need to work on. It's not possible to please everyone and because art is subjective, different people will have different responses to your work. And that's okay. What matters is being open to take note of the feedback sift through it and take the parts that will serve your artistic growth. No matter how talented you might be, without effective self-promotion and marketing, your work may not reach its full potential audience. The internet has changed the way we connect with our audience. Social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, or X as it is now called, allow you to share your work directly with a global audience, bypassing the need for a physical gallery space. You can create your own website or online portfolios to display and sell your artwork, reaching potential buyers worldwide. And you can do that on platforms like Squarespace, Wix and WordPress. They're fairly easy to use and they allow you to showcase your work and create a professional online presence without the need for advanced coding skills. I made my own website on Squarespace. Dom's been helping me with it lately. It's a work in progress, but it's working for me and I don't have any coding skills. I'm not technically minded at all. As well as that, online platforms like Etsy or Artfinder allow you to sell your artwork without costly gallery fees. I used to have an Etsy store and I sold thousands of prints and paintings around the world. That's what got me started. Social media is a really important tool to use if you want to grow your audience. I was reluctant to use it in the beginning. I didn't like social media. I still don't like it, but I know it's important for my business 
and without it I wouldn't be where I am today. So it's worth learning how to use it well. The problem is now we have reached saturation point and it's becoming much more challenging to stand out from the crowd. So the decision to pursue gallery representation or embrace self-promotion through social media depends on your individual goals and the specific art market that you wish to target. So there you are. They are seven habits that successful artists maintain. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. If you paint in watercolor and you need extra help or a push in the right direction, Head to my website to find information about my online classes. And while you're there, subscribe to my email newsletter, because if you do, you will get access to a full length watercolor tutorial of mine and my free guide to the mistakes that watercolor artists make. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Right. We're taking back to the house. See, Poppy's got the straw now. Quick. Okay. It's, it takes on a different, deeper, forward to the road of new disc. Oh, I'm going to do it again. <coughs> Personal obstacles. Oh, obstacles. Let's get into the bathroom. You might need to walk. If I'm getting a bit teacher-like there, aren't I? Oh, God. Should we do the thumbnail?